third grade and welcome back. Today is week four, day four, and we are, because it's a Thursday, you should have done your skip counting, get a little exercise, five, 10, 15, 20, 25. You need your materials today. Now for today, you just need a pencil or pen or something to write with and something to write on for your word problem. The rest of the stuff, we're just gonna kind of go over and review how to create um, different graphs. So you just need something to, let's see, something to write with and, um, all right, here we go. And we're going to find our word problem. We're going to rip it apart. R, read the problem. I, identify the important information. P, plan how to solve the problem. P, draw a picture. E, execute your plan. Solve it. And D, does it make sense? So let's see. Here we go. Our word problem today. I'm going to get our ripped up top here. And we have to write it a little smaller. Oop. Look, as I say smaller, it got a lot bigger. I'm going to have to write a little bit smaller so you can read it. R I P P E D, because there's a lot of words today. So let's take a look at what we have found. Each day at school, Buddy liked to buy snacks after eating his lunch. On Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, he bought a cookie for $2 expensive lunch. On Tuesday and Thursday, Buddy bought an ice cream for three dollars each. How much did Buddy spend on snacks in one month? One month. Four weeks. Hmm. So we read our problem. R. Very good. I identify the important information. So let's take a look at what is important here. So each day, Buddy liked to buy snacks after eating his lunch. On Monday, we need to know Monday's important. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, he bought a cookie for $2. On, and I'm going to use a different color just so you can kind of see the difference in the days. On Tuesday and Thursday, Buddy bought an ice cream for $3 each. So Tuesday and Thursday, he bought an ice cream for $3 each. How much did Buddy spend? Let me grab a different color here. How much did Buddy spend in four weeks? Hmm, so our question goes back to how much did he spend? But there's also important information in there. Not just how much did he spend on snacks, but there's important information that says there's four weeks. Hmm, so we know whatever total we get, we have to turn it into that's one week, and then we have to figure out the four weeks. So let's see, I'm gonna make a plan here. Hmm. I think I want to set it up maybe, maybe like um, a calendar, like the days of the week, and then figure out how much does he spend in a week, and then figure out, hmm, how much does he spend in a month? So let's do it like a calendar. So a calendar would have, well, there's seven days in a week, but there's only five school days. So let's figure this out. We're only going to do five school days. So ready, I'm gonna do like a calendar and set that up. Oops, I need to move it a little bit here. My head's in the way. Whoop. Okay, so now I'm gonna set it up for five days. So five days would mean four cuts. One, two, three, four, four cuts. Four is an even number, so I'm not gonna cut right in the middle. I'm gonna cut a little to the left and a little to the right, and then I get one and a one. That's pretty even, looks about right. So we would have, this would be like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And we know that my little buddy, Buddy, likes to eat Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. He eats a cookie for $2. So we'll put a $2 cookie in Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And on Tuesdays and Thursdays, he eats a $3 ice cream. Okay, so let's figure out how much does he have total for the week. So I need to add these all up. So looking at this, hmm, 
I could skip count by twos and threes, or I could make buddy pairs. I kind of like the idea of making buddy pairs because I see some fives in here. So looking at this, I would go, that's a five, that's a five, and then I've just got a two. So let's see, five plus five plus two equals five, 10, 11, 12. Now it's for four weeks. So I'm looking at 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 12. So I could do it as repeated addition or I could do it by multiplying because that's the same idea. Repeated addition is multiplying. So I say 12 times four. Hmm. What if I don't know what 12 times four is? Well, I do know that 12 is the same as 10 plus two. And I've multiplied both of those times four which is using my distributive property, break it apart using the expanded form, break them apart, and then when we're done, we put them all back together. So let's see, what's two times four? That would be eight. And 10 times four I know is 40. 40 plus eight is 48. Let's see if our 12 times two works out. So writing it this way, I would say four times two. So four times the number above it, four times two is eight. And then I can multiply by the other number. Four times one is four, 48. Do we check? Yes, we do. So we made our plan. We set it up. We executed it. Does it make sense? $48 a month in snacks? Well, not if it's his mama, it doesn't make sense. Whoo-wee, that's a lot of snacks there, buddy. But he must go to a very expensive school because our ice cream certainly doesn't cost that much. So does it make sense? It does with our math numbers. Does it make sense for Buddy to spend that much on snacks? No way, Jose. So this one checks out. Good job. Okay, so now we are looking at our graphing. And in this graphing, we need to be able to figure out how to build a, um, this would be a pictograph. And if you look to the side, I've put tally marks here. Now this is all the information that I've gathered from all of your favorites. So looking at this, you can see the title of my graph up top. It says, Favorite Ways to Get Into a Pool of Washington West Third Grade Students. And all of you, well, some of you have voted. And in your voting, I tallied them up. In the first one, it says climb down the ladder. And you can see hmm, that I've got, what is that? One, two, three, four, and a bundle. And we know that bundles are worth five. So that would be five. Hmm. Then we take a look and we look at jumping right in. And we can see we've got five, 10, 15, and one. So that would be 16. And then we look at hanging your feet in and climbing in slowly. I can see I've got one, two, three tallies. Good. So now that I have three tallies, we need to make a key for our pictograph. So looking at our pictograph, we've created a bit of a key. And looking at our key, we, I put it as one star. Now, we don't want to make 16 stars across this. So what if we said each star equaled Hmm, how about two? So I'm gonna say each star equals two votes. So then going back to our graph, I would put in for my ladder, that would be a weird one, it's an odd number. So I would need a half of a star. And you can see that we put in two and a half stars for the ladder. And for jumping right in, we've gone across and done one, oops, we've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which would be eight and eight is 16. That checks out. And then for slowly climbing in, I've got two and one extra is three. Good job. Looking at this one, I've got another one. It's Favorite Outdoor Activities of Washington West Students. And you can see, again, I have my title up top. 
I've got, instead of a tally chart, I've created a frequency table. Now, this frequency table would be what I would create after I've put in all of your tallies. And then I went through and translated. Just like on the page before, I had all my tallies there, and then I turned them into numbers. And you can see that we've taken these numbers and I've put them all through and I've got my sunshines. Again, I don't want to have eight different sunshines going across. So I want to make my chart as efficient as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say each sunshine is going to be worth two votes. Now let's take a look at how we put our chart together. In the chart, you can see, by looking at this, I can see that there's a title for each section. You can see like bike, oops, bike and scooter has a title. And then you can see that using the bike and scooter, there are one, two, three, four sunshines. And you can also see that in the walk and the run, there was only a vote of one, so we put a half of a sunshine. All right, moving on. Here's another one. Now this one, hmm, there's no key on this one. So if there's no key, that means I'm not using pictures. Okay, and I do see up the side, I see intervals. And as we talked about intervals, they would be consistent. So as you can see, it looks like I'm counting by, let's see, zero, two, four, six, eight, ten. So I have intervals of two for my chart. I also have, these are, this is measured in what? What am I looking at here? I'm looking at students. These are intervals of student votes. And if you look down at the bottom, you can see that this, these items down along the bottom, they are the foods that we took a survey of. So this is important that you label your graph. All graphs should have labels. They should have a title, they should have um, intervals up the side. They should have labels so I know what I'm measuring. Those are very important parts in doing your graphing. Got it? So let's take a look. Looking at this chart, we did a bar graph. And in looking at this bar graph, I can easily look at my graph and go, whoa, people obviously like tacos the best. No, I can see that they like pizza the best. I can also see that there are hmm, three foods that got the same amount of votes. And just by looking at this graph, I can quickly see that. If I just read my frequency table, I might have to go back through and look and double check. But looking at my graph, I can easily see which ones have the most votes. I can easily see which ones have the same votes. And I can see which ones have the least votes. Taking a look, we've got another graph. This one says, favorite book genres of Washington West third grade students. Now, I notice this one's a little bit different. I have my intervals along the bottom, and I have it labeled. These intervals are about students. And then I have my book genres, you can see I labeled it, along the side. So looking at this, I know that I am going to have a horizontal graph because my intervals go along the bottom. It changes along the bottom. Those aren't my categories. My categories are along the vertical. So as you can see, this one is going to go the other way. You can also see that I created a frequency table instead of a tally chart. So same idea. I've already gone through, done the tallies, and figured out who's what. And let's take a look at this table. Hmm, looking at this, I can easily see that the least favorite genres is a tie between a science fiction and an art. And I can see that the most favorite would be the mystery 
because that one goes all the way up to the eight. I can also see looking at the science fiction and art that those were voted for, hmm, not quite two, but they didn't get to the line. Those are those were each voted for one time. Now, oh goodness, I've got another tally chart. Now this one, you can see I didn't count them, so I didn't fill in the frequency. So let's fill in the frequency together. Looking at winter, because this this graph is says the favorite seasons of third grade Washington West students. Hmm. Looking at winter, I don't have a bundle, do I? So I just need to count each one of those individually and I can see one, two, three, four. So winter was voted for four times. Looking at spring, I see one, two, three, because there's no bundle. Looking at summer, I've got a bundle. So I've got five, 10, and then I just count on 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I've got 14. And looking at fall, there is no bundle there either. So I just count them on one, two, three. Now, this one, you can see that I have the titles. Uh, this one is, my intervals are up the vertical, and you can see it's by an interval of two. And what we're looking at is students or student votes. And along the bottom, what we're measuring is the seasons. And then I have the seasons broken down into their categories. So make sure if you are ever creating your graph, you have to have labels. You have to have your title and you have to have your labels with your intervals. And let's see what we've got behind door number one. <gasps> Whew, does it match up? Absolutely. When I look at winter, winter says that it goes to four according to my table. And I look at my tally chart and my frequency that we've done and it says Four. Hmm. I can see that spring and fall both got the same number of votes. And I can see that it went past the two, but not quite to the four, telling me that that is between two and four is the number three. And looking at summer, summer went all the way up to the line of 14. Now, here we are. We are looking at a line plot graph. Now, when looking at a line plot graph, we have our title up top, which is fantastic. We also have our line along the bottom with our categories. And you might think, well, where's the intervals? Where's the marks? Now, in a line plot, just like putting plots on a line, we're going to make X's. Hmm. And when we make X's, we fill it in as we go. So I would go over to my information table. This is my information table over here. I'm going to go over there, and every time I read one, I'm going to put another X down. Okay, so we've got beach. So I would then put a X on the beach. Hmm, and then I see there's a park. So I would put, under amusement park, I'd put a... Oops, I'd put a X there. Aha! Then I see that there is camping. And I'm going to put a camping X. I see we're at the beach again. And I'm going to put another beach X. We're at the park. Oops. We're at the park. And we're going to do another X at the park. Camping. Camping. Beach beach, beach, beach. And we are going to go all the way doing this as we fill in our chart. And it's actually very important to go one at a time. And you might think, oh my gosh, Miss Jones, but this might take forever. But if you don't go one at a time, you're most likely going to forget where you were and make a mistake. Beach? There's lots of beaches, it seems. Beach. 
each. Whew. You might be thinking, Mrs. Jones, will this ever end? Yes, it will. Don't worry. Beach. Beach. Park. And beach. Now, holy moly, we went through and we erased, or sorry, we checked off each tail, we crossed off each vote as we went along. Now, as we did that, we added an X each time, okay? Each beach, we kept going through. Beach, 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 beach. Looking at this, this is how you would do a line plot graph. You can't go through and just cross them all off and then X them all up because you don't know if you might forget one or a miscount. And looking at this, I can clearly see that there are a lot more people who like the beach than I see camping and amusement parks. So this is where we're going to stop today. We have gone through every single type of graph on how to create them. The big things on creating our graphs, we needed titles for all of them. Every single one should have a title. We should have some form of labeling or names on the sides of our graphs. You can see on our line plot graph, we have the um, favorite activities or favorite places to go. Each one of the graphs needs to have a um, labels. You should have titles to them. Looking back, we'll scoot back really fast. You can see that we have intervals on the bar graphs. You can see that the intervals can go along the vertical or they can go along the horizontal as this one is. We also have, oh, those are our intervals again, on a pictograph. You can see that there are pictures and the pictures can go either um, vertically or they can also go horizontally. It doesn't really matter, but the big difference with a pictograph is that you need a key. How much is each picture worth? All right, crew, I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.